Last time, I concluded that angular velocity and angular acceleration are vectors, which is great, but that means that they have a direction. So how are we able to define a direction for angular velocity and angular acceleration? Well, let's consider a situation like the Earth, which is rotating on its axis. So the Earth has some axis like this, and it's going to be rotating like so. Okay, well, if I try to define the direction just based on where a point is, like let's say I do one over here, well, a little bit later, it's going to be over here, and over here, it's going to be over there. Um, and so it keeps changing, which of course is kind of the point. Um, if it weren't constantly changing, then it wouldn't be um, rotating. Similarly, if I tried to say, okay, well, this one's moving this direction, well, later it's moving this direction, and then later it's moving that direction. So again, this is changing as we go. Um, except there is a special place where the um, direction is not changing as we go, and that's along the axis. So if I draw a vector that's just pointing along the axis here, well, that's going to be in the same place no matter what. Um, however far the, um, the Earth has rotated, the axis is going to stay in the same location. So that is going to be the direction that we use in order to define the rotation. So um, the direction of W, um, or rather the direction of omega, is along the axis. The magnitude, of course, is just going to be given by d phi by dt. So if you know how many radians per second it's going, that's the magnitude, the direction's along the axis. But there's still a bit of a mystery here, right? Because we have um, two directions along the axis. So is it the way that I drew, or is it the opposite way? So both of those are along the axis. Both of those are going to be in the correct direction. So we seem to have this arbitrary choice. Okay, so physicists have a trick that we use anytime a situation like this comes up. There are many places in physics where we have um, a direction, but we have a choice. It could be one way or it could be the opposite way, and we seem to be just kind of arbitrarily picking one. So the rule that we use is called the right-hand rule, um, or RHR for short. Um, and essentially, this will give us a way to pick which of the two directions along the axis we want. It doesn't need to be extremely precise. We don't need to get a quantitative result. We're just picking between the two. Okay, so what you do is use your right hand, and then um, you're going to make something of a fist with your hand, but with your thumb sticking out. So um, this would be easier in person, but I'm going to do my best to sketch a hand. Okay, so here is a thumbs up sign with your right hand, like this. Um, and specifically, what you want to do is you want to have your fingers rotating in the same direction as the rotation. Okay, so the earth is rotating like this, so I want to wrap my fingers in that direction. Um, then your thumb is going to give the correct direction for omega. Okay, so rotation like this um, gives the omega pointing upwards. So that means that the correct direction to choose is this one and not the one pointing the other way. If the Earth were rotating the opposite direction, well, then your hand, in order to match the rotation, would have to be um, kind of like this. So then the rotation would be going this way, the opposite, and that would lead to an omega that way. Okay, so all this trick does is just give us a way to choose which of the two directions is correct for the rotation. Okay, so um, in order to figure out the direction for alpha, we use the same um, trick that we used with the relationship between velocity and acceleration. So um, for alpha, if it is speeding up, then it is the same direction as omega. And if it is slowing, then opposite omega. Okay, so um, just like with velocity, if something was speeding up, the acceleration was the same direction as velocity. If it was slowing down, acceleration was opposite velocity. That same um, relationship is correct for alpha and omega. Okay, so let's do just one more example. Um, let's say that we have a wheel that is rotating this direction, but it is slowing. Okay, so if we want to find the direction for the omega and for alpha in this case, well, um, wrapping your hands around um, in the direction of rotation, I have my thumb of my right hand pointing out of the screen um, towards me. Okay, you should try that and confirm that you get the same thing. So you get omega out of the screen. Um, and in the textbook, they would say out of the page on an exam, out of the page. Um, in a classroom, they might say out of the board. So it's literally the surface that the object is drawn on. The vector can be into or out of that surface. So don't get too caught up by you know the terminology for a screen or a page or whatever. Um, it's out of the screen in this case because you're looking at this on a screen. We have a way to draw that. So for vectors that are in the plane, um, it's easy to draw an arrow. Um, we draw an arrow that is coming out of the plane by uh, imagining the point pointing towards you. So just a circle with a dot in it um, is the way that we draw that. Um, now I told you that the um, wheel is slowing down, so that means that the alpha is into the screen. Okay, we have a way to draw that as well. So um, we do a circle with an X in it. Okay, so you can imagine the feathers of an arrow pointing away from you. Um, and so that is um, the way that we can make sense of these two symbols. So the point is the arrow coming towards you. The X is the arrow pointing away from you. 
Um, we're going to use these uh, symbols again. Um, they'll come up a lot actually in um, 122, but we'll use these more even in this class as well.